What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. The cash cow of boxing from 140 pounds and below, Javante Tank Davis, three division world champion. Holds belts in the junior welterweight division, the lightweight division, and the junior lightweight division. It's looking to uh, get back in that square circle. The target month is October. The fight could take place either in the middle part of October to the end of October. Now I'm hearing that. The two dates that they're looking at specifically are October 30th and October 31st. Now, October 30th will be the Saturday. October 31st will be Sunday. Now, you know October 31st is a key date because he's fought Leo Santa Cruz last year on October 31st. That was Halloween night. That was on a Saturday night. The fight took place at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, a.k.a. Alamo City. After that, he fought Mario Barrios earlier this year in 2020. That fight took place in the ATL State Farms Arena in front of a star-studded crowd. Now, from what I'm hearing through the grapevine, Javante Davis' next fight will be at 147 pounds. It will be in the welterweight division. And the front runner for that fight is Keith One Time Thurman. Now Keith did an interview with Fight Hype about three or four weeks ago. And he said he's more than open to a matchup with Javante Tank Davis. He said it might be those uh, smaller fighters might be the fighters that give him the most problems. Those small packages, I think that's the uh, phrase that he used, small packages are what gives him problems. As you know, his only loss was to uh, Manny Pacquiao who has a similar height and frame to Javante Tank Davis now that fight is the number one fight that Leonard L.B. president of Mayweather promotion is looking at now they're looking at a couple other opponents but plan A is Keith One Time Thurman now they're going to have to crunch the numbers and they're going to have to make the money make sense not only for Javante Tank Davis and Keith One Time Thurman, but for Showtime, Al Heyman, and the PBC. Everybody want to make money at the end of the day. Now, the problem is with uh, Keith One Time Thurman is the money that he's going to command. See, the thing about it is he's not the classic beat side fighter. He's a guy that's been in arguably the biggest pay per view fight in the last, what, five years when he fought. Manny Pacquiao. That fight did 600,000 pay-per-view buys. Manny Pacquiao hadn't did those type of numbers in several years. You know, he had fought people like Timothy Bradley, the third fight. He fought Jesse Vargas. And neither one of those two fights, which was on HBO pay-per-view, pulled 600,000 pay-per-view buys. So they let you know that Keith one time Thurman through his uh, personality and his charisma and he talked a lot of trash called uh, Manny Pacquiao T-Rex said he had short arms and basically did a good job of promoting himself and selling that fight that took place on Fox pay-per-view in that fight with Pacquiao Keith one time Thurman made two and a half million dollars now you look at the last two opponents for Javante Tank Davis Fights that took place on Showtime pay-per-view was Leo Santa Cruz. He made one and a half million dollars plus 50% of the pay-per-view buys. Mario Barrios made $500,000 flat fee. At the, at the end of the day, he walked away with one and a half million dollars in the fight with Javante Tank Davis. Now, Javante made, in the Leo Santa Cruz fight, he made $1 million, and he made 50% of the pay-per-view buys. So, actually, 
Javante Tank Davis was the B-side in the Leo Santa Cruz fight. He was the B-side. Based on what each fighter made going into that fight. Leo Santa Cruz made more money in that fight. He made one and a half compared to Javante's one. Both of them, both fighters got 50 million, both fighters got 50% of the pay-per-view buys. So in that regard, he was the A-side in that fight. Now in the Mario Barrios fight, Javante Tank Davis was the clear A-side. He made the most amount of money and he got a percentage of the pay-per-views buys which enabled him to walk away with the lion's share of the money in comparison to uh, Mario Barrios. Now, Keith One Time Thurman, who made two and a half million in the Manny Pacquiao fight, is gonna be looking for similar money fighting Javante Tank Davis. Now, I think he's probably gonna have to accept a lower minimum with a chance to uh, make more money on the back end of the pay-per-view. I think that's going to be the key thing. But they've got to make the numbers work. they got to look at the projections because Javante Tank Davis, Keith Thurman is going to do more pay-per-view buys than Leo Santa Cruz. Javante Tank Davis is going to do more buys than Mario Barrios and Javante Tank Davis. Well, they've got to project that out and then pay guys accordingly and um, look for the fight to do this amount of pay-per-view buys and hopefully it's more toward the high end of the projections where both fighters can make satisfactory money. Money that they will be willing to accept, which that being the guarantee minimum with the potential to make more on the back end. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires, but that's what's going on right now. They're negotiating with Keith One Time Thurman. Will they come to agreement? Maybe. It's a, like I say, it's a numbers game. And I think they've got two other opponents in mind in case it doesn't work out with Keith One Time Thurman. They're going to look at Andre Berto, which has a solid name in the sport of boxing. He actually fought Floyd Mayweather Jr. in his last, uh, I don't I know, I don't caught that Conor McGregor fight. You know, I know that was, that win was on uh, put on Floyd Mayweather's record, but his last fight against a boxer was Andre Berto, and that fight did 400,000 pay per view buys. I don't know what Andre Berto walked home with, but I know it was probably less than $5 million. So he has been very inactive. He hasn't fought in the last two years. He'll be looking to uh, get one last payday before he hangs up his gloves. And that could be a potential matchup between him and Javante Tank Davis. Now, they've got a fight going on in that same month, in that same time frame as Javante Tank Davis's fight, which is uh, in Atlanta. That's going to be the Shakur Stevenson versus Jamel Herring fight. That fight's going to take place at State Farms Arena in the ATL. So that makes me believe that maybe Javante Tank Davis's fight in October won't be in Atlanta. They might take that fight to Las Vegas, especially if it's Keith One Time Thurman. Now, if it's Andre Berto, I would advise him to try to look for that fight to take place in the ATL. So let me back up, and we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But these are some of the names as possible opponents for Javante Tank Davis's fight in late October. Middle to late October, according to uh, what I'm hearing. He's gonna be fighting somewhere in the middle to late part of October. But well, what I'm hearing, it's more likely it's gonna be October 30th or October 31st. The other name that I'm hearing that could be mentioned, this is a plan C. Plan A is Keith Thurman. Plan B is Andre Berto. Plan C is a dark horse, Abel Ramos, who was last seen in the ring putting on his best performance of his career when he stopped Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa had never been stopped in his career, and he was able to get the stoppage and defeat and dominate Omar Figueroa in his last fight. He lost a very competitive decision to WBA welterweight champion Jordanus Ugas. That could be a possible opponent as Floyd Mayweather and Leonard Ellaby could continue to tap into the Latino market, continue to tap into the Latino fan base. So that could be a possible opponent for Javante Tank Davis. But the breaking news is Javante Tank Davis' next fight will be at 147 pounds. Javante Tank Davis's next fight will be in the welterweight division. And the number one 
opponent that they want to make the fight happen. The front runner for that fight, plan A is Keith Thurman. The thing is, can they make the numbers work? Keith Thurman is one of the bigger names in at the PBC. He's been in a highly successful pay-per-view. And you look at the project, the uh, pay-per-view buys that Javante Tank Davis has done in his last two fights. He did 200,000 pay-per-view buys in the Leo Santa Cruz fight. He did 215,000 pay-per-view buys in the Mario Barrios fight. You crush those numbers and you project it out to fighting a higher name, a guy that's a bigger personality in the sport of boxing, have accomplished more than his last two fights, his last two opponents, that being Keith one time Thurman, moving up to a more glamorous division, a welterweight division, which should add to the pay-per-view buys, should add to the buzz of this fight. They've got to project that out and pay both guys accordingly. Also, if they pay Keith one time Thurman, maybe they give him maybe a million and a half plus pay-per-view percentage. And they give uh, Javante Tate Davis one and a half plus pay-per-view percentage. They do a good pay-per-view number and both guys walk away with $5 million a piece when it's all said and done. I think you could do see similar numbers like that. But if uh, Keith Thurman insisted on getting at least two and a half guaranteed minimum or maybe going higher than that since... He earned that in his last fight. Obviously, he wants to be more than that in his next fight. Then that could be problematic, and that could possibly be a hindrance for this fight taking place. And if that's the case, they go to plan B, being Andre Berto, and try to do a, a fight with him, negotiate a fight with him, and try to set up Davis versus Berto. If they can't uh, get that done, then they go to plan C, a much cheaper opponent in Abel Ramos. And, that's, and that, again, that will be enable them to uh, continue to tap into the Latino market continue to tap into the Latino fan base. So we will see what happens. We will see what transpires. That's the breaking news, man. Javante Tank Davis' next fight will take place at 147 pounds October 30th, October 31st are the two dates that have been prominently mentioned for his next fight. And Las Vegas, Nevada is the front runner to host the fight. Not the ATL. Especially if it's uh, Keith Thurman. Now, if it's Andre Berto, it could end up back in the ATL. If it's Abel Ramos, it could end up back in the ATL. Or they could take that fight to Las Vegas. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Let me know your thoughts about Javante Tank Davis' next fight taking place at 147 pounds. You think it's a good idea or a bad idea? He needs to, he still got business to tend to at 140 pounds, at 135 pounds, and 130 pounds. He needs to concentrate on fighters at those weight classes and quit moving up fighting naturally bigger guys and taking risk and taking unnecessary a risk at fighting a guy that with the skill set and the power of a Keith one time Thurman or even an Andre Berto or even an Abel Ramos both guys that are naturally bigger both guys that can punch so let me know your thoughts and hit the like button if you like the content of this video and subscribe to JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend, and I holler.